Welcome to the Totally Honest Cooking Show. I'm Mark. Today we are making breakfast sausage or country sausage, depending on what you want to call it. The base recipe that I'm using for this comes from the joy of cooking, but we are modifying. So keep that in mind. Again, if you don't have a copy of this, I think I've mentioned it at least once. If you don't have a cookbook at all, this is a cookbook to buy. It's got like 4,600 recipes. It tells you how to do all kinds of crap. Let's get started. So we have a pork shoulder here. You can use pork shoulder or pork butt for this. Ideally, you don't want bone in. I, I bought bone in, so we gotta deal with the bone first. Now you can use leaf lard or fat back for this. I don't have either of those, so I got a bunch of bacon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this fat layer here the part that looks like skin. I'm not taking all of the fat because fat is delicious, but we've got plenty of fat with the bacon. Plus there's a lot of fat in this cut anyway. And then I'm gonna reweigh it without the bone and then we're gonna figure out our seasonings. Okay, let's go. Don't be afraid of this at all. Just get in there. You might have to strategize a little bit. I get rid of the extra stiff part of the fat and I leave the rest. So once you make an in on it, you can just kind of get under it and take it off as one big chunk. I try to leave some marbling, but I just don't like this big skin looking chunk. I just don't. So we get rid of it. Okay, that part's done and that was easy enough, right? So now we're going to remove the bone. Just get around the bone and start cutting. If you have a boning knife, that's probably easier. A meat cleaver would probably also be good for this application, I don't know. I don't have a meat cleaver, I have a vegetable cleaver and I've got this weird knife Babish sells that is not quite a cleaver and not quite a chef's knife. Once you've got the bone out, you're gonna cut off as much of the meat as you can without totally destroying your knife. Okay, now that we've got the bone out and some of the fat off and some of the connective tissue, we're gonna weigh it. The reason we weigh it is because I'm not used to making sausage. I don't do this a lot. And so what I'm trying to do here is figure out the amount of spices I need per pound of meat I'm doing that by looking at the base recipe that I have, a bunch of other recipes, and I'm putting together something that I think I'll like. Okay, so we have 3.37 pounds of pork shoulder. Cookbook says for every 1.5 pounds of pork shoulder, you should use eight ounces of bacon. So we're gonna use a pound and maybe a fourth. Oh, I'm not good at math. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna kind of wing it there. Um, but that seems about right. So next, we're gonna start cutting our pork into one inch cubes or smaller, smaller being better according to our guide. And you're just gonna start cutting. I'm gonna do the rest of the shoulder and then I'll be back. Once our pork shoulder is cubed up, we're ready to move on to the bacon. And for that, I'm just gonna do one of these. Easy enough, right? Now, if you wanna make it smaller than that, doink. Okay, now I'm mixing everybody together. Might be easier to tip everybody out at this point. Not sure. You're trying to break up the bacon and just because it's, it's gonna make it easier to mix it all together later. So the next step is to transfer this to a rim baking sheet and stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes and let it firm up while we get our spices together. The reason that you're doing this is because it's easier to grind it while it's firm. It doesn't slip around the grinder, all that stuff. I can't remember what I did last time and I can't remember whether I made little dollops or what's the easiest form factor for this is. So I'm just gonna put it all on the sheet and see what happens. And if that was a problem, we'll deal with that as it comes. Totally honest cooking show style. While that is chilling out in the freezer, we're gonna mince some herbs. 
This recipe calls for thyme or marjoram and savory and sage. I could not get savory. I could not get marjoram. The substitutes for savory include marjoram, thyme, and sage. So what we're already using. So I'm just gonna either add more or replace them with aromatics, we'll see. So we're gonna start with the sage because it's easiest. I'm throwing this in a food processor. You can just mince it with a knife if you want. I'm not because I don't like mincing things. I'm bad at it. Which theoretically means I should do it more, but in actuality it means I don't wanna. See, that's the way to do it. So now that the sage is taken care of, we're down to the time, which we just go boop until we have a big pile. Okay, I prepped a lot less of the thyme because it's harder to pluck. I hate mincing thyme. And even in the food processor, it doesn't really come out. I could run a knife through it, but I'm choosing not to on the grounds that, again, I'm really bad at it. Like really bad at it. Okay, these measurements are per pound. One teaspoon black pepper. Half a teaspoon garlic powder, half a teaspoon onion powder, fourth a teaspoon of ground bay leaves. I ground those in a coffee grinder. Fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of our ground sage, one teaspoon of our thyme. And around an eighth a teaspoon a pound of Hungarian sweet paprika. From here, there's a lot of ways you can do it. I'm gonna use this meat grinder attachment for my KitchenAid. You could use a food processor. You could use one of those old fashioned crank meat grinders, whatever you want. If you're lazy or you just don't want to deal with any of this, you can just buy ground pork at the grocery store and spice it, right? But before I can do that, I got to add in my spice mixture. And also I got to point out that I need a teaspoon per pound of salt. Eh, close enough. That was a whoopsie doodle, but that's okay. I don't think that was significant. I lost a lot of bay leaf, but I'm not regrinding. You're gonna wanna mix your spice mixture all together as best you can. I've got my bowl, I've got my ramrod. I'm gonna get to grinding. And you're just feeding the sausage in through the tube. Easy enough, right? And every so often, you're gonna give a little coating of your seasoning mixture. You are gonna mix it around later, but this just makes it easier. Again, you'll find this part of the process pretty easy. Just sprinkle in your spices and keep ramming the sausage through. Okay, now you're just gonna get in there with your hands. Mix it all up. Okay, once you feel like you're done mixing, make a little tiny sausage patty like this and just smash it on your cast iron. We're gonna let it cook. Once it seems cooked through, you're gonna give it a taste to see if you need to adjust your spices. Tastes like breakfast. I think that's good for now. I call this Mark One breakfast sausage a success. I might tweak it in the future. We'll see. Ooh, it gets a nice little burn in the back of your throat on the finish. I like that. Okay, from here, I'm going to bag up four pounds of it, and then I'm gonna use the rest to make a little bit of Brenner action for me. I'm hungry. You can pipe this into casings and make links. I prefer patties, so I'm gonna keep it loose. Um, you can also use this to make sausage gravy. I will be doing that Maybe next week. It depends on if I can get my life together to do it. Okay, like, subscribe, click the little bell, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.